a Northwestern program that's been to six postseasons in the last 11. Coaches on either sideline that have a lot of respect for one another. And we're up and underway. The home team gets the first possession. Joe McEwen at the helm of this Northwestern Wildcat team. And he wants his group to use that shot clock. Ball reversals. Pay at their play. Play at their pace. That is the goal. We see them here. Taking their time. Walsh up and in. First basket is good. Moving the ball. Forcing Iowa to have to defend for the entirety of the shot clock. That's exactly what Northwestern wants to do. Aggressive defense to start. Iowa just attacks it. Kate Martin will be going to the free throw line. If you add up the experience on both of these sidelines, I'm trying to find the exact number. It's a big number, number I'd imagine. It's a big I'm really number. I'm curious. I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> In the 60s, you, you talk about 39 seasons as a head coach for Lisa Bluter, 38 seasons for Joe McEwen. And Joe McEwen is the winningest head coach in Northwestern basketball history. Both of those free throws are good for Kate Martin. Left all alone, McWilliams in and out. And this is where Iowa likes to work in transition. Outside in, Davis back down to Martin. Just off, and, and sometimes it takes both squads some time to get into their offenses, getting the flow of Walsh asking for the ball. Deflected by Hannah Stolke. Her athleticism to get over and get in front of Walsh. Hannah Stolke doing a great job moving her feet, reading the angle properly to cut it down. Caitlin Clark just plays so quickly, reads the assessment situation. Fabulous hesitation. Her ability to get down low is so special. That was Weaver down low, Northwestern. Up five to two early. Clark, step back. She's comfortable already. Two points to go. And that's signature. Can't get caught ball watching. Walsh putting up a number of shots early. They're going to her quickly. Basketball stays with the home team. Referee switched it'll be Iowa basketball. They had to converse a little bit on that one. Caitlin Clark against this Northwestern team, three and three during her career. Three wins, three losses. Look at the passing by the Hawkeyes on that one. Ball movement on display. They're up by two. Iowa, one of the best, number one in the Big Ten, number two in the entire country in assists. Meantime, Lau, aggressive to the cup, stepped out of bounds. He sets up that Iowa offense. They go down to Stokey. She's up against Walsh, looking for some help. Stokey against Walsh, and one opportunity. Power move by the sophomore. Hannah Stokey continues to grow her confidence, especially down low with her back to the basket. Kaylee Walsh did a good job initially on the defense, and then Stokey, fabulous pass from a full draw. It's, it's good to see her get a bucket early. Averaging 12 points per game for this Iowa team. And this Iowa defense is making you think if you're the Wildcats. If you can hit the mid-range jumpers or threes, it's going to open things up on the offensive end. Addie O'Grady establishing position in the post. Misses it. Here's McWilliams. The first year harder asking for the screen. Paige Mott hauling it in. Steps into the layup. Northwestern is battling early. No, Western's been able to get some second chance opportunities early on, catching Iowa off guard down low. Joe McEwen spent 19 seasons at George Washington, winning his coach. He's so quick. I love Iowa's decision to get the ball inside to her early and often, trying to attack Northwestern's bigs and get them in foul trouble. Pina, first shot up. Count it. That is what Maggie Pina does. She is a flat-out shooter, always ready on the catch.
Maggie Pina in her first season here, transfer from Boston University. Stolke, time to work in this possession. Sagging off the of page. Mott just off. A falter. They're going to Stolke early in this one. The other way, and another trip to the free throw. Can't break that plane of verticality. Stolke, of course, the reigning sixth player of the year in the Big Ten. She comes off this screen, stops and pop from the outside. Rebounded by Daly. Daly likes to get to her spot in that mid-range area. Mid-range Mel going at it. Mid-range Mel. Caitlin. And she has officially moved on up in the record books, folks. That one was for third on the women's all-time scoring list. If somebody is, is lacking and I see that they're off just a little bit, I'm putting it up. Here comes Clark again. Getting into the lane. Stays with it. The Athletic recently did an article about the practice players of Iowa having to guard Clark, and they said she is so fast, people do not realize it. You see the speed, you see the decision making from three. Her ability to get downhill and stay patient with this is difficult to guard. You're going to get your step count up if you're defending Caitlin Clark. That's important too because so many scouting reports are honed in on Clark so that they need to continue trying to get some paint touches inside. Mott, little pump fake. Met at the rim by O'Grady. Foul is the call though. There was a lot of arm movement coming down at an angle. To be here for some of the ups and downs of this program. She was on that 2021 team that went to the NCAA tournament. High pass up to O'Grady. She converts on the play. O'Grady's done a really nice job over the last couple of games coming in and making those easy buckets. But she positions herself so well underneath the basket using her size to get the right angle. Deflection by Clark, picked up by Davis. Hawkeyes looking to run, ultimately slow it down. Shot clock off. Caitlin is at eight points. Two threes already. She loves these shot clock winding down, end of a quarter situations. Before time expires and draws the foul. Keeping single digits mentally, it's easier to approach the next part of the game. This game still very much in single digits. Clark extends it by a point. Wow, with the heave. She has eight points so far. And when she got to five, she passed Jackie Styles to become third on the all-time scoring list. You count those last couple free throws she had. She's the first player in the game to get into double digits. How about now? Number two and number three on the list are Big Ten players. All time. There's some ballers in this league. So Hawkeyes into its offense. Remember, this is the top scoring team in the Big Ten. Great defensive possession there by Harder. The freshman timing it up well. Here she comes the other way. Off balance. Of course, she's from the Philly area, so he always supports <laughs> eight teams. And so he said, okay, let me take a look. And he's like, wait, who's this? Guess who else was looking at her? Tara Vanderveer, Stanford. Meantime, Clark, quickly. Northwestern in the middle of a scoring drought right now. The last time they had a field goal was 234 left in the first. The first year, harder percentage areas. Get some of those easier looks and try to get defensive stops. Interception by Mel Dick. Hangs in the air. Nice job going up there by the junior. Make sure people know you point that. But when you know where you succeeded, and she's gotten right into those areas of all-time scoring record. Turnover by the Hawks. And Northwestern playing within itself. Remember the game plan from Joe McEwen. Play at our pace. Don't force things. Daily. In and out. Clark slicing it up to start. Unbelievable the way Clark can lead her team to the basket. Stolke told us, Kayla knows I'm open before I do sometimes. She says, I always have to be ready. My job is just to run and catch the ball. 
back the other way, keep the game within range. Hawks passing around. Davis left open. She's got to shoot it. Three second call there. And that's the result of, of that sagging defense that makes you think a little bit too much. On the other end. Clark scoring all the time, but that that's unbelievable right there. Leading Stolke perfectly to the basket. Oh, yeah, and then she also has the ability to find other open teammates. Molly Davis has done a great job for the Hawkeyes this year, stepping up and being more aggressive, scoring the ball. It's just such an advantage the Hawkeyes have when you have multiple playmakers on the floor at one time. Davis averaging over 17 points per game at Central Michigan. That's Marshall. Everybody getting in on those three balls. They're wide open right now. Iowa spreading the ball. Spreading the floor well, and it's forcing Northwestern to get stuck defensively. Lau, keeping the basketball the entire possession. Marshall looking for something. Martin, reverse. The transition offense is what the Hawkeyes like to do. A lot of good child in the game. Foul. Contact to the head. You're trying to figure out how to get it back to single digits. Pace of play with Iowa. They play so fast. At times, teams think they can run with them as well. I mean, Caitlin Clark just took it from all the way behind half court. Got to the basket. And Caitlin Clark is now the all-time leading scorer in the Big Ten with that quick layup. Meantime, Northwestern trying to get something going. They do. And now Northwestern needs to focus the moment that ball goes through the basket. Get back. Try to cut off angles and stop ball. Let's see some more heroics and more history from Caitlin Clark now, the Big Ten's all-time leading scorer. All-time leading scorer, getting to the basket, slicing and dicing. I mean, nobody was even close to her. Easy buckets for the nation's best scorer right now. And now, the Big Ten's all-time best scorer. Of course, that means she passes Kelsey Mitchell on the NCAA's all-time scoring list. See the numbers right there. She continues to move on up. And she has no clue. Lisa Blue <laughs> has no clue. He said, Coach, you know, some history can happen today. She's like, What are you talking about? She said, You look, you had uh, two heads. So they're worried about winning a basketball game. That's where this team is at right now. And that's why that's why it's all worked so well. Weaver drained that one. Northwestern doing a better job moving the ball, forcing Iowa's defense to shift. Down to Stolke. They're looking for Clark. Fading away. Ten's all-time leading scorer. Uh, I mean, I think she's heard an airball chant or two in her day, but Caitlin Clark gets so uh, pumped up by the haters. They gotta be careful what they're saying in the crowd. They want to get her going even more. Wow. Trying to make something happen. Shot clock winding down. Harder recognizes it. Secured by Stolke. Here comes Clark. Making magic happen. That's three fouls for Weaver. She was the main defender on Clark. This is an Iowa team that started 7-0 in conference play. It's important when you're a team that always has that target on the back like we talk about. To find that, okay, we have to win games and we're going to win games in different ways. For example, Northwestern. Coming up on the Xfinity 10G Network Halftime Report, Carolyn Mano and Aaliyah Boston. Top Clark making history and highlights from around the Big Ten. A falter off the glass on that one. Good child. Put up a couple. No go so far. You always wonder where Caitlin's eyes are looking. That doesn't tell you the story most of the time. From under the basket, 
I'll tell you what, as a player, threes, as you know, much more fun to hit than just getting to the basket for a layup. But Clark's ability to stay patient within her scoring ability, take three when it's there, or she'll get to the rim. She's so difficult to defend because she's the lead at scoring at every single level on the floor. Northwestern moving with some pace, and Mel Daly has been able to put that basketball in the bucket. Daly found a way to keep her shoulder square to the basket off balance. That was a high-level finish. Give and go, Martin to Clark. Slow getting up. Here come the Cats. Pina asking for it. Daly has the hot hand, keeps going to her. Team's leading scorer. That holds true so far in this one. Double digits for Daly. Couple possessions left here in this first half. Martin had a lot of time. Shot clock off. They go to double harder. The Cats will have to play out of it. Iowa basketball. Caitlin has the ball at the end of the first quarter. What will she do at the end of the second? Davis drifts off. So there's 12 points for Hannah Stolke. She's already at her average. We're just starting the second half. Kate Martin on a mission with that drive. Sets up Marshall. She puts it in. Iowa is so dangerous because multiple threats from the outside. Playing straight up on this possession. Stolke just being there with the hand up alters the shot of Haley Weaver. Give and go opportunity. No finish at the rim for Kate Martin. You have four black jerseys almost at all times around the ball, not allowing Northwestern a ton of room to move on the interior. They've done an excellent job of preventing easy opportunities. Look, the defense for Iowa has been a huge key to their success this season, a reason why they've only lost two games. Nice find from Clark down to a falter. They share the basketball pretty well, too. Oh, defense sharing the basketball. Threes click, from the outside. Number one in the conference. All cylinders. Daly gets right where she wants to go. It's a good decision by Gemma Kuhn to start her in the second half. Just because she has that scoring ability, she's aggressive. Clark finding a crevice. That angle, it's a wide open angle to the basket. Hill Weaver has to try to throw her off. Bot asked for it, caught it high, kept it high. First Michigan, Megan and I will be on the call. But you know, you keep doing these projections and, and every game her averages go up, Caitlin Clark. She's already has 20 in the third quarter here. Two threes for Marshall. Meantime, ball movement by Northwest. <laughs> A win by Clark. Block and the bucket. I have a feeling a lot of people in Chicago came to see something like that tonight. Well, that came from Clark block, a deja vu of what she did against Michigan State in the fourth quarter in a tight game. Clark stepping it up defensively, timed that perfectly. Well, Lisa Bluter always gives Caitlin more credit than... Folks, listen to this. Fans are waiting to get into this arena when we were here for shoot-around. There's been, obviously, a lot of people at these away games come to see Caitlin Clark. We've seen a lot of Northwestern fans as well in the building. Student section right now for the Cats completely full. That can come in for Northwestern. Can hit it from three. She's got great size down low. Kaylee Walsh just spent so much time on the bench because of those fouls. Knocks down both of those free throws. She's seen a big bump in that category this season. Last season, 76% from the free throw line. This season, 88. Nice movement by Fearbach. Hey, that's like those drills you practice in camps when you're growing up and you wonder why are coaches having us do a three-person weave up and down the floor. Yeah, she really wants people to know the history of this game. Lynette Woodard. 
University of Kansas. That was right before the NCAA recognized women's basketball in division two sport. 20 point difference. Walsh, nice duck in there. Walsh. Clark, that's the side. Just hauled down by Fearbach. Doesn't work on the outside. Why not go in? Northwestern passing it around. A falter. Speedy. And you notice the commitment to the pace, no matter who's in the game for Iowa. You have to be able to run. These Hawkeyes trying to turn the corner. Kate Martin, bully ball. Just a big rebound by Paige Mott. Next up on the schedule for them, Sunday versus Wisconsin here at home. That's a team that they've already beaten. Hawkeyes in a different position. Walsh finished with nine. Northwestern trying to get a bucket for the first time in more than three minutes. Gotta get the ball inside. They go right to the rim. She's a leader. She said it was a shooter on that. I've beaten Caitlin Clark before, by the way, folks. During her time at Iowa. It's funny talking to Caitlin Clark in media days and whatnot. She always looked like Pete playing Northwestern Blizzard. Well, that matchup zone. Hard to pick apart. Nice dunk down to Stolke. Stolke's ability to read the floor offensively and move without the ball makes her a really special player. She's got 15 and 8, so we'll be on double double watch for Hannah Stolke. Harder, attack mode. That are going to continue to get more confident and improve over the years. Casey Harper has the potential to be an all Big Ten player when it's all said and done. Caitlin has shot nine free throws, 84% from the free throw line. She remains perfect. This is a team that averages over 90 points per game, good for the best in not just the Big Ten, but in the country as well. Weaver holds the follow through. Defense trying to trap easily. Nice shot by Northwestern, moving the ball with the pace. Shot clock off here towards the end of the third. Clark. Always look to set things up. Stolke having herself. Hannah Stolke moving without the ball. Stalking the interior. I mean, Clark just passed out over like five defenders. That's like watching a quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, connect with Travis Kelsey down low. Of that. Any Taylor Swift reference that Iowa made to turn that time on social media was on point. Northwestern does not get a shot off before the third quarter ends. Iowa. It's going to be a race to the finish. If you get that fourth spot, you get the double buy in the Big Ten tournament. That's exactly what teams are trying to do right now. Much easier to win a conference tournament if you only have to play three days instead of two. These are valuable games moving forward. Oh, Davis almost faked that runner, got it down to Stokey. Four threes for Gabby Marshall, feeling it. Iowa completely broke this game open when they were able to create second chance opportunities. And not just second oppor chance opportunities at the rim, but from three. Daly off the window. And Daly, again, off balance, but still the ability to square her shoulders up midair, which is what makes her such a successful shooter from mid range. Stokey off the balance, gets it to Martin, and she drains it. I was completely getting into every gap within Northwestern's defense. And they're finding each other wide open. Well, and this is when the hot guys are really dangerous when everyone is getting involved. Through contact, Mel Daly. She keeps coming. Six times this season. Gives you a little more energy throughout the course of the game. Clark had a lot of time on that one, but the rebound by Kate Martin. The real ones. Uh, yeah, it's fair, as you should. You can feel it out there. Funny, Hannah Stolke, I would say, has allowed 17 points. I've felt every single one of her buckets. 
still plenty of time here in this fourth quarter. Wow, sticking with the offensive set. Why not, Mel Daly? Why not? We'll keep counting. I mean, oh, that's a good sign. That's a lot of math that it would require to find that out, but. Wait, she, it said she traveled almost 200,000 miles? Uh, Caitlin Clark 3, so like to take the disc. Oh, wow. Buy it. It's a lot of math. Meantime, as we're yapping, Kate Martin goes to the rim. Candace Parker has something to Candace say about Parker that. Play no, above the rim. No, no, I, Brittany I love Griner that breakdown. Can play above yeah, the no, rim. I love that breakdown of it, though. You, you don't have that extra space. Getting back to the fundamentals of the game. But also the Ohio State game, a record for women's basketball this year so far in terms of the number of fans in that building inside. And you know, you know, Clark is the player that is bringing so many people into the arena, but I really hope that there are fans that come into a game like this tonight and say, oh, I'm a fan of Mel Daly after a game like this, or I really like what a player like Sydney Falter has been able to do. There's more players in college basketball than just Caitlin Clark. Now, she's the most exciting player, but there's so much talent across the league. you got to tune in, folks. Night in, night out. It's something special right now. Talk about it, Megan. Preaching. Down to Mott, trying to use her size to muscle her way in. 29 points for Clark so far. And just the excitement to be able to play in this atmosphere, the appreciation. It's been a great crowd. And Northwestern, you know, back 2019-2020 season when they won the Big Ten Conference, had fabulous crowds. Game in and game out. Clark, she gets the best at every time right now. Northwestern has not been able to cut off that angle all game long. And back to that. Northwestern's played in front of great crowds before. It's awesome to have this type of atmosphere tonight. A lot of black in the building. But still, a lot of fans of women's basketball in attendance. That last bucket by Caitlin Clark. Got her over the hump to 30. Oh my God. Make it 33 points. 50 30 plus point games. Here comes Lau. But Clark also ranks second in the nation in assists per game with nearly eight. She ranks first on her team in rebounds a game with almost seven. She's doing everything on the floor. Her assist rate is nearly 50%, meaning she has her hand in half of the shots that Iowa scores on. She does a little bit of everything and does it at such an efficient level. So if you want to get on her for something, you got to find a different argument. I want to talk about what she's done on the defensive end, too. Two steals this evening. Saw the nice block. And the vision. Dadiger. And it's the vision off balance. She's still able to thread that needle over the shoulders of your, your leaders. Is able to be there. Associate head coach. Did an amazing job in his absence. Angela Smith, an all-time Iowa great, by the way. Yeah, you, you, as you said, is it, is it weird game planning against the, the team that you would normally root for? She was on. She was just a little bit. And Angela Smith, some of the all-time. You talk about great Big Ten players. The Kelsey Mitchells of the world, the Angela Smiths, who won not one but two WNBA championships. Clark putting on a clinic there. Oh. 35. 97 63. Weaver letting it fly. It wasn't just hitting those threes, it was the ability to constantly get to the rim at will. And just like that, inching closer and closer. I'm not good at math, Sora, but now I see it's a little over 100 points to get to Kelsey Plum. When the math is starting to match. into this game, it was 139 to get to Kelsey Plum's record. That's 104. There you go. 39 minutes. I was also right. saying all that so that you could do the math because I'm not good at it either. 
His Iowa team has reached 100 for the sixth time this season. McCain off the glass, can't help but laugh. But she jogs down the other way. This Iowa team is so balanced. So many different threats on the court. Now they're defending at a high level. Dump down low in Bloomington. Well, and every single night. That Penn State game is going to be fascinating. Good child. She's put up a couple. Gets one to go. Western just needs to continue trying to work on finding balance scoring. Can they establish that inside game and get open opportunities from three? Walsh has the ability to go off in a game, score in multiple ways, but she didn't have much time or opportunity. Edgar with confidence. Entire bench gets up for that one. Edgar looking like a guard spinning off of that. Finishing with some authority, nobody gets more excited than when some of those players, post players, they don't have as many opportunities minutes-wise than Jan Jensen. Iowa's associate head coach who works with these post players. She got the biggest smile on her face when AJ Edgar made that play. Well, and all of these benches nationwide, there's premier players, right, that just haven't gotten their opportunity yet. We were talking to Sydney Afalter today. Nice pull-up, Jay. And she said... Lisa Bluter told me over and over again, my time will come, my time will come. Sydney Folder said, I'm just going to stay in the gym. And, and now she's the first person off the bench for the Hawkeyes. Here comes McCabe. He has a couple threes. Jim Fee in on the action. One of those nights for the Hawkeyes. 110 points. Shot clock off. Just look at the scoring, right? Three different players in double figures. I can imagine that's something that Lisa Bluter will be pleased with. Four. Couldn't forget about those four threes from Gabby Marshall. Four players in double figures. McCabe will dribble out the last couple seconds. The Hawkeyes, 20 and 2. Eighth straight 20 win season for Lisa Bluter.